We welcome those of you that have watched number three Syracuse beat Virginia 15 to 12 in women's lacrosse at the Dome in Central New York with Roddy J. Theory has already thrown a touchdown pass to Porter Rooks, and that time he hits Devin Carter across the midfield line. And Roddy, I'd say so far so good. Leary's had a couple passes batted away, but the red team, which represents the number one unit for state coach Dave Doran, has uh, already kind of flexed its muscle a little bit. Yeah, Porter Rooks had a really nice catch and run, but with the exception of those couple of batted passes, Devin Leary's looked really sharp. Yep. And this is Jordan Houston, who is uh, handling the bulk of the headline running duties today. And this is a Wolfpack team. We just recently visited with Emeka Amezi. A lot of the headliners for Dave Doran are on the sideline today for this red and white scrimmage. So here's a second and seven, and Leary shoots it to the flat, and that's Devin Carter again, and a first down inside the 25 for the red team. But 19-yard throw by Leary, but Dave Doran's got, he's got a pretty good roster that's not suiting up today, Roddy. He, he certainly does. A couple of really good running backs in Bam Knight and Ricky Person, Emeka Mezzi not suited up. You see the two big linebackers, Drake Thomas and Peyton Wilson. But you've also got Terrell Dawkins, a big-time defensive lineman who's not suiting up as well. So, so they've got maybe an all-ACC caliber team not on the field, but it's an opportunity for these, for some of these other guys, some of these young guys, to show what they can do with those uh, older, more experienced, proven guys out. Yep. So those changes. And now second and 16 after you saw Jalen Parker get into the backfield. And here's a little reverse, and Thayer Thomas looking to throw. Will fire it deep, and it is caught. Devin Carter in a touchdown. Wes, we should have known that Thayer Thomas throwing a pass was going to happen in this spring game. It seems like every year they break it out, the former baseball player being able to sling it downfield. It actually does a nice job of going through his progressions. Looks to the right, goes back to the left, throws it up, and lets Devin Carter go get it. This is a talented group. We didn't necessarily expect to see Thayer Thomas throwing a touchdown pass, but we should have known it was a possibility. Well. I can't wait till you tell Dave Doran at halftime about Thayer Thomas going through his progressions. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to oh, ask him. I'm going to oh, ask him about that. Exactly right. So, Devin Carter, a touchdown catch. Porter Rooks, a touchdown catch. And here is Ian Williams, who missed his first point after connecting here. So, Devin Carter's in the end zone on the throw from Thayer Thomas. And the red leads 13 to nothing as the red-white game continues in Raleigh. You're watching ACC Network Spring Football presented by Geico. Players and coaches both excited to see that after what was a very awkward 2020 fall in college football. And so far, NC State fans got to be pretty excited. You know who Thayer Thomas is. He got to sling the rock today. Man, that's uh, he, he's a guy that does that on a regular basis, a semi-regular basis. And good to see Ben Finley back in. Saw him take an awkward hit on his knee, came off the field. Really good to see him back in. There is Finley. Shoots it in the flat, looking across the middle. And that ball got deflected. This is, of course, the younger brother of the former Wolfpack quarterback, Ryan Finley. Here's the hit earlier. Tanner Engel knifing in, just trying to make a play. Ben Finley gets rolled up. Obviously, a scary moment, but uh, everything checked out, it looks like, and he's back in there. Yep. Boy, it looked bad when it happened, didn't it? Certainly did. Yep. Third and five quickly for the white team. And back underneath, Finley trying to find a tight end. And that is Yates. Yates Johnson was the intended receiver. And there's Isaiah Moore lurking, if you will. 
<laughs> Always. Isaiah Moore's one of those guys, he's been around long enough, and he's, he's, he's such a student of the game that he's one of those guys that you hate playing against in the spring because it's almost like he knows what you're going to run at every, every single play. He's right. a really good player that, along with that excellent rest of that, that linebacking core uh, with Peyton Wilson, Drake Thomas, it's going to make for a really stout NC State defense. Ian Williams punt fielded by uh, Thayer Thomas. So that gets us back, and we'll see the red offense back on work again. Don't forget, 5 o'clock Eastern this afternoon, we'll send you to Tallahassee. Spring football game for Mike Norvell. It's his first one. Remember, last year just got totally sidetracked. Chris Cotter, Mark Herslick, Katie George. Triumphant return to ACC Network today in Tallahassee. Exciting to see always what, streaming live on the ESPN app, by the way. Excited to see what that crew looks like in their second year under Mike Novell. You finally get a full spring. As you said, his first spring game in his second year because of the strangeness of 2020. Yep. And that's a Florida State team looking to improve significantly. All right, so here's Devin Leary in the red unit with two touchdowns already. And trying to get the run game going, and boy, the defense rallies nicely there. Alex Gray, redshirt sophomore from Page High School in Greensboro, the stop. Now, Roddy, they're running left side. Big 79s out there. Iki Iquanu, who a lot of people are excited about, trying to help Delbert Mims on the block. There's our guy, Iquanu. He is a guy that is going to be one of the best linemen in the ACC next year. And with everything that NC State has coming back in the offensive line, should power a pretty exciting offense to watch. Yep. Another throw to Anthony Smith. I mean, Roddy, what kind of year? This guy had an incredible year and didn't make first team all ACC. Which is crazy, honestly. But his athleticism just pops out. You see the pancake blocks. Ikea Kwanu is one of those guys that's got some nasty to him. And in the best offensive lines in the country, think of that Alabama offensive line a year ago. That crew was filled with guys that have the attitude that you're going to play through the echo of the whistle. Ikea Kwanu is one of those guys. Third and short, and Mims cashes in. Played 12 ball games a year ago in that free year did Delbert Mims the third out of Indianapolis and able to get a 12 yard run there to convert. With the starters out, Ricky Person, Bam Knight, Delbert Mims has been able to get a lot of attention here today and really throughout the spring and he's looking to cement himself as a guy that can be in the rotation and be counted on behind those, those two starters. Yep. Fresh set of downs for Leary. And here's Jordan Houston, who's played behind Knight and Person first couple of years in Raleigh. And tell you what, Jordan Houston's got plenty under the hood too, Roddy. I, I think his future is really, really bright. I do too. He's got some giddy up and go. Look at him in the hole, makes a man miss, and then has the quickness to get up the field. Jordan Houston's one of the most explosive guys on this offense and just because Bam Knight and Ricky Person's so good so experienced There's just not a ton of carries to go around But he's sort of that Swiss Army knife that you can move all over the place And you can rest assured that Tim Beck is gonna find a way to get him in the game and get him the football We get a timeout ass for here Dave Dorn working right behind the offensive unit after the 34-yard run by Jordan Houston. We'll step aside, too. Under five to go first period here in Raleigh. Nova is a full gym in your hands that enables you. With Devin Leary in the red squad at the 10. And Leary going to keep it. And the whistles blow pretty prompt after about a five-yard run. It's uh, uh, one of those spring calls that the defense just doesn't expect because you've got the quarterback in a non-contact jersey, so you go ahead and run the quarterback draw. Right. Get you down inside the five. Yep. So red zone trip for a red squad already leading 13 to nothing. Off the four. And Houston. 
plunges to the one. Jordan Houston, Roddy, behind Bam Knight, behind Ricky Person, to a degree Trent Penix in some respect. We saw Penix carry the ball a lot last year. Now he's making a bit of a cross-training change out to like tight end and H-back, if you will. Houston, though, a dual threat guy, I think, to help the Wolfpack this year. Yeah, he certainly is, and I think next year they'll, they'll look to get him back to the production that he had in 2019 over 500 yards rushing but the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield is what really sets him apart and makes him different in that backfield and he gets a one yard touchdown run to widen the gap for the red unit and no surprise he cut it back to the left side roddy <laughs> well i would too behind big 79 Little inside zone. Look at Iki Iquanu, though, collapsing the left side of that offensive line. Look at Big 79. Just clearing the way. Some nice blocking up front. Jordan Houston plunges into the end zone. Yep. There's Daniel Joseph. So here is the point after Colin Smith. His first chance at a kick and punches it through to make it 20 to nothing. Well, we have talked about Iguanu a lot. Keep an eye on the right side of your screen here. Getting downfield, and Bubba Bolden tries to come and uh, make the tackle. And Nikki Iguanu says, You want some? I'll give you a little two piece down the field, picking on guys at the second level. He's not only explosive, powerful, but he's a bully out there, Wes. He finishes every block. And that's why he gets all that syrup from Dave Doran for the pancakes. His athleticism, length, explosiveness, strength have really made him an interesting prospect in terms of the next level, but in terms of what's going to happen next year, this guy is going to be one of the best linemen, not only in the ACC, but in the country. Boy, no question about it. Ball at the 25 for the white squad, and Finley throwing to the far side, and catch made out in space, and that is Christopher Scott, a freshman from Decula, Georgia, for 18 yards. Nice job of cutting it up and showing some some quickness there to get away from the defender. Yep. It's a good delivery, too, by Ben Finley. First time the white squad's been able to achieve a first down. On the throw to Scott, who played in just two ball games a season ago and has no problem taking that, that free run. And Demarcus Jones straight ahead. You wonder, no person, no night. Houston getting a lot of run. Mims and Jones, these are valuable reps for these guys, Roddy, who played, you know, a combined 16 games on special teams last year for the Wolfpack. Yeah, and they're both young players, so the ability to get this level of reps that they've gotten this spring and in this game is really important to their development. You get, to, you get a taste of what it's like to be the lead dog, be able to go out there and take carries on a play-in, play-out basis. Yeah. Dave Dorn looking on. Of course, the head coach of the Wolfpack has done a phenomenal job here in Raleigh in rebuilding NC State's football fortune. Two years ago, nobody in the country hurt more than NC State. Number two in wins. Past Dick Sheridan last year. Six bowl games in eight years as he gets ready for season nine. And Roddy, and sources are telling me he and his staff will be getting some new paperwork on a deal next week that uh, extends them accordingly. And he's got an outstanding staff. Here's a crossing route. And another catch. And that's Julian Gray for 17. So a little crossing route, and Gray's able to get out and show his quickness. And the white team's getting a little bit of momentum. I like the call. You can see the young players on this team are just as talented. And, and Wes, you were talking about Dave Dorn and his staff. This may be his most talented team that he's had since he's been at NC State, and that's high right. praise considering some of the crews that he's rolled out there. Yep, there's another run. A little reverse to Gray. He gets an 18-yard carry on the reverse. And now, all of a sudden, here's the white unit against the red defense. 
In the final half minute of this first period, making some noise. I think Dave Doran smiling because Ben Finley went out there and threw a block. And, and I say threw a block, a, a, that might be a little, a little aggressive for what actually happened. He just kind of stood there in the way, which is absolutely fine. It's all you need to do as a quarterback. <laughs> so in the red zone at the 17. Finley looking to the end zone and overthrows Max Fisher. Roddy, the, the roster talent, one thing, the coaching talent, another here in Raleigh. The uh, offseason addition of Joker Phillips for Dave Doran as wide receivers coach and assistant head coach. That's a huge move, too. Certainly, as Joker Phillips has been all over the place, he's got a ton of experience, he's always been a great recruiter as well. So a big addition. And look, Dave Doran had some tough decisions to make a couple of years ago. Uh, and he, he brings in Tony Gibson. Dave Huxtable uh, was a longtime defensive coordinator, but Tony Gibson's done an excellent job. Was able to bring in Tim Beck, who did a really nice job with that offense. That ball is caught off the deflection. <laughs> oh, they did rule it incomplete. Looked like Michael Fox. A transfer from Central Arkansas had caught it off the deflection. <laughs> and that will be the final play of the first period. Well, a couple of touchdowns. Actually, three of them in the first period. Including Thayer Thomas dialing up Devin Carter on a 28-yarder. And Jordan Houston punching it in from a yard out. Second period next from Raleigh in the red-white game. And Roddy Jones, that guy in the gray shirt's got a chance to have his name called. The former Wolfpack defensive tackle, Aleem McNeil. And on third and ten, an incomplete pass starts quarter two for the White Squad, looking to get on the board for the first time. Aleem McNeil, an excellent player last year for this NC State team. Certainly going to have his name called. I would guess sometime on day two, Wes. And, and, and look, he is going to make somebody really happy on the defensive line. Big man can move. Scored a touchdown last year, Wes. Love a big man touchdown. Yep. Yeah, big big man touchdown at Virginia for Aleem McNeil. And here is Ian Williams to try a 34-yard field goal for the white team. And Williams knocks that right through. So a 34-yard field goal will put the white squad on the board for the first time here early in the second period. Christopher Dunn, by the way, the Wolfpack's regular kicker, off-season groin surgery and is uh, not available today for the ball game. And you're talking about one of the top scorers, not only in the ACC, but also there's Christopher, who's still coming back and will be healthy and ready to go, according to his head coach. Look at the guns. Look at the gun show going on there, Wes. I'm telling you, man. Everybody's been working out in the spring, right? They're glad to be working out yeah. this year, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Some uh, things slowly getting back to normal. Dave Doran, though, not not opting to go suns out, guns out. No. So a ten-play drive gets the white squad on the board. Here's Leary going to work and deflected and almost intercepted. Oh my goodness! It hit Meredith right in the hands, Roddy. This one just sailed on Devin Leary. Nakai Meredith probably wasn't expecting it to be thrown right to him, but watch him come off. You got to finish this one. Oh. You see the frustration on his face. That was tough, Wes. You, you, you aren't necessarily expecting an air throw. You get it, you don't finish it, and then you got to flush it and go on the next play. Top 10 recruit out of the Commonwealth of Virginia a couple of years ago in the Virginia Beach area, Nakai Meredith. Sees one go by the boards, and there's Delbert Mims continuing to run the rock. 25 yards on a half dozen carries for Mims here. And the way this NC State team runs the football, not only the, over the course of the spring, but certainly into the season, is going to be important. This offense struggled at times running the football, even with those two talented backs. So this offensive line continuing to develop as a unit is going to be really important. Leary flush from the pocket and 
the tag will be awarded to Ibrahim Conte. Now that's a guy, Roddy, whose name is, this is what you were talking about with competitive depth, right? You're gonna hear Daniel Joseph, C.J. Clark, Gavin Van, guys like that. But Ibrahim Conte has played a lot of football at NC State, the redshirt junior from New York. Yeah, six foot four guy with a lot of length and some athleticism as well. The competitive depth is a good way to put it. That defensive line certainly has it. And we don't even see a guy like Terrell Dawkins who's out today. That's another one. And, and see, you start. A 51-yard putt, by the way, sets the white unit up again. Roddy, we talk about NC State. Now, it, look, nationally, Clemson's going to be regarded as the favorite to win the ACC, the Tigers we saw last week, certainly the Atlantic Division. Are you surprised more aren't talking about Dave Dorn and NC State right now? Uh, well, I think a lot of the, the oxygen after you get past Clemson and the ACC is sucked up by the, the, the rival of the Wolfpack, and that's UNC with the excitement of Sam Howell and what this what that UNC team is going to do. But yes, I am. This is an NC State team that's returning not only a lot of guys, but a lot of really talented guys. You just got a shot at Devin Leary. Uh, there's 13 of the 14 teams in the ACC are returning their quarterback with starting experience. We are not hearing Devin Leary's name enough in terms of the pre season hype because this dude was excellent in the games that he played a year ago we saw him live and in person against Pitt and that was yep. as good a quarterback play as we saw all year in the league so I'm really excited to see what Devin Leary is going to do not only in the second year in this offense but with the full season yeah, I think that's a really good point point. and Dave Doran spent a lot of time talking about their depth the other day Here's Finley, back foot throw, whistled as a sack, I believe. By the way, you can tell we're playing with a running clock here in quarter two. And there's By Jones. <laughs> Roddy almost on cue. We were talking about him during the break. Yeah, it, it, you talk about depth. I mean, the, the starters in this linebacking core, you talk about Wilson, Thomas, Moore, but Vi Jones is basically a starter as well. Long, athletic, former USC uh, transfer. He's a guy that, that had an impact last year on special teams and, and on defense. He is a, an excellent player, gives him a much different look in terms of the athleticism at that linebacker position. Joey Ray is the running back. Here's Finley, and that'll be a sack in the pocket, and there is 31. Vi Jones busting through. C.J. Clark was also in there for the Wolfpack. Vi Jones coming off the edge. Look at the ability to slap the hands down, Ben. Mm. Daniel Joseph was in the backfield as well. That was a, uh, that was a party at the quarterback. Anthony Belton, the right tackle, had his hands full. Certainly did. There's a punt, and they will whistle it out of bounds right around the 38-yard line. Peyton Wilson going to join us. One of the toughest cats linebacking in the ACC. And we're looking forward to catching up with Peyton Wilson. You need to know where the football is with the Wolfpack on defense. You normally can find it if you follow number 11. We will talk to Peyton Wilson when we continue. Red-white game is underway here in Raleigh. Second quarter continues after this on ACC Network. Do you have a dark garage that needs more light? Or on the first play of the red possession, Nick Trico in the secondary picks Devin Leary. It's the second time Devin Leary's been a little high on a throw. Nakai Meredith had a, an opportunity earlier. And this one is straight to Nick Trico, who brings it in, doesn't miss his, his chance. No. Redshirt freshman out of outstanding program in Charlotte at Mallard Creek. Comes up with the interception. So the ball will be spotted at the white 40-yard line. And on cue, we get to talk to one of the defensive stars of the Wolfpack, Peyton Wilson. Great to see you. Hope you're well. Uh, how hard is it standing on the sideline today? It's pretty tough. You know, I love being out there, and I love playing the game and being with my brothers. But I'm excited to watch some of the new guys that we just got, some of the transfers ball out today and see what we, can, we got going into fall camp. 
Well, since you brought up the new guys in the transfer, who are some of those guys that have impressed you so far uh, in the spring? Well, I mean, on the defensive side, all we got was Derek and Cyrus so far. Both of them have came True. in and learned the defense immediately, made a big impact on the defense side of the ball as soon as spring ball started. Yeah, you mentioned Derek Pitts uh, and Cyrus Fagan. Uh, Peyton, you guys, are, uh, Roddy has said this, there, there are a lot of guys talking about a lot of people, but the competitive depth you guys have, both sides of the ball, is really impressive to see. Yeah, it's every day at practice is really competitive. You know, the ones and the ones, the twos and twos going at it every day, making each other better. You know, we're practicing against the best in the ACC every day, so we're getting better every single day. With the amount of experience that you guys have coming back on the defensive side of the football, what has that allowed you all to do in the spring in terms of getting better and really starting further ahead than a lot of other people would? Right. We didn't have to really go over the defense as in depth. You know, we could just go out there and work on what we know we messed up on last year and just fix the things that we need to take off of tape. Peyton, the... Uh the, the guys out here, like Isaiah Moore, uh, yourself, I mean, Vi Jones, it, it's really amazing. What does that mean once you guys get to August? All the experience, Tanner, Tyler Baker Williams, I mean, I could go on and on here. Right. Where's this group going to be by the time August camp rolls around? How much confidence, how much comfort is there for right. the Wolfpack this fall? Right, we're looking to be the best defense in the ACC and the country this year. We got all the talent and all the experience that we need to do everything that we need to get done. Yeah, you guys absolutely do. Uh, so this is a team that, that obviously won four of the last five. The, the bowl game didn't necessarily go your way, a game that, that you didn't play in. But what does that momentum do for you going into this offseason? Well, you know, going into the offseason after spring ball, we could just continue to work on the things that we need to take off and take. And we have everybody back. We'll even have uh, some more transfers coming in that could help us out. You know, we'll just continue to perfect our craft and become the def best defense that we can come. Uh, are you as excited for this fall because of how hard it was to play last year? Yeah, I mean, last year it was a little hard. You know, you had guys out for two games at a time. You know, a lot of us came back right before the season, the first game week. So we were either out of shape or not up to weight. But this year we have full off season and we're the, getting the vaccine soon. So we don't have to worry about getting contact <laughs> traced. <laughs> no kidding. Is Ben Finley fired up as he goes into the end zone? Now, now Peyton, you, you can't see me, but I've got an Atlanta Braves hat on right now. Okay. And your brother Bryce in the organization. When they go bring my man Bryce up, man, let's get that fifth starter. When oh, yeah. Bryce going to come? That's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm no, thinking no, no. April 11th. I think April 11th. He's oh, pitching. April, look at this. Right look around this the corner. Weekend. Tomorrow, right? I mean, look oh, at yeah, this. I mean, it's tomorrow. April 11th. So tomorrow? We're talking tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. That's the last thing I've heard from my parents. Don't, okay. don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? I might not know all the details. <laughs> I might not. We will check on that. But Bryce right. had an excellent, had an excellent spring oh, training. How, spring. What, what, what is that like? Having a brother that's, that's competing at a high level. What's that relationship like? I mean, it's just awesome to see him. You know, he's worked so hard to be where he's gotten and to see him really strive. It really just, you know, makes my heart happy because I've seen him work ever since, I mean, I was born. You know, he's loved baseball yeah. and he's always been good at it, but he's worked to get where he is. And it just makes me really happy to be able to talk about him and people to ask me questions about it. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, he's done a great job. You have as well. I will ask you this in part, though. Since we're not going to talk to Drake, I, I feel obligated to ask you, does Thayer Thomas negotiate passes for spring games? Do you think he actually goes to back and says, let me throw the rock in the spring game? Oh, yeah, he loves all that. He loves all the glamour, the trick plays. He loves to throw the, <laughs> throw the football. That's the, Thayer, that's the Thayer way. You know how he is. Uh, hey, Peyton, great to see you. Get healthy. Look forward to seeing you in the fall. This will be a fun team to watch. We appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you all. You bet. One of the best linebackers in the ACC. Always fun to catch up with uh, with Peyton Wilson, and he's right. I think Thayer Thomas does negotiate throws. I think he does go and ask. But, but look at his look at his track record. I mean, he, he's putting the ball on the money, going through his progressions under pressure. I right. would too. Here is Jordan Houston. You saw the Ben Finley touchdown run, which is terrific to see, given the. Boy, given what happened on the second snap of the day, and now the red, the red trying to respond here. There's Finley on the score. <laughs> I hope he didn't get hurt again on the celebration. <laughs> uh, so Ben Finley's in the end zone. We got ourselves a 10-point game. And Roddy, even when it's, and you played in this scenario, ones versus twos. Uh, 
there, there's some competitive things going on here too now from that that second unit if you will in the uh, in the white jerseys and Red's got to an answer here. Oh, absolutely. The, the second unit, is, they're not just going to go out there and lay down because there's bragging rights in the locker room. You've been going up against these guys over and over and over, and now that you're keeping score and, and honestly putting it on TV, you want to show yeah. out. There's Jordan Houston pushing it to midfield near a another first down. And so Houston, boy, fun to visit with uh, Peyton Wilson 177 tackles in two years in Raleigh he was a guy that was in the running for ACC player of the year on defense a year ago obviously with Jeremiah Usu Koromo in the season that he had uh, yeah. winning it certainly no shame in, in not bringing that title home but, but he's going to be one of the front runners Peyton Wilson will be because of his ability to find the football just always has an impact and the coaches and his teammates have been talking to us about him since he was a young guy overcoming a couple of knee injuries has largely stayed healthy obviously uh, not participating in this one getting healthy but uh, has been an excellent player for NC State ever since he stepped on the field and then delivered you the uh, breaking baseball news that his brother Bryce they get the ball tomorrow in Atlanta against the Phillies. An overthrow there. And Keon Lassane, the intended receiver. Great to visit with uh, Peyton Wilson. We had a chance to do it last year, Roddy, in some of our game coverage. Uh, fun guy to talk to. Really kind of a spirited leader of this group. Loves the game. That, oh, yeah. Holy that, that's the thing that stands out. He, he loves the game of football. Plays it with a reckless abandon. And we didn't get to ask him about his trash talk, but we talked to him about it last year. He's a dude that is always, always not only uh, telling you what he's going to do, but he backs it up as well. Yep. Throwing the flat. Delbert Mims has had a nice day. I think Jordan Houston has looked good, Roddy, as we anticipated. But he was kind of a known commodity to us starting today. But in terms of the understudies, been impressed with 34 out of Indianapolis in the red jersey. He has been impressive. A 220 pound back. It seems like NC State just prints out these, these <laughs> big, powerful guys when you look at Pam Knight and Ricky Person ahead of them. But Delbert Mims certainly has acquitted himself well. Yeah, we're going to talk to Pam Knight in the second half of this. Here is Leary on the run and a rope for a first down to Thayer Thomas. This is all you want right here out of the QB, isn't it? Absolutely. You get the rollout and the laser down the field. And, and that's what Devin Lear is going to give you. He's got excellent arm strength, but better than advertised mobility as well. He gets a little pressure in his face, gets out to his right. And then watch the, watch the laser right on the money to Thayer Thomas. Ball at the 20 after the 20 yard throw. And Leary coming boundary side for Thomas and 10 more. Maybe 11. Yep, first first and goal at the nine as they spot it there. And with the clock rolling here in quarter two of the red and white game. Devin Leary in the red unit on the 10th snap of this possession. And when he's in sync with Thayer Thomas, this offense is dangerous. Love what Thayer Thomas can do in the slot. Makes a big impact there, and he's a really good run after catch guy as well. Now he goes back to the wide side for Thomas. Did he hold it? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Great catch by Thayer Thomas on the nine yard throw. How about the throw? I mean, this is, uh, this is excellent coverage on the back end. Ayer Thomas able to bring it in, but the throw by Devin Leary to put it on the money at his best, that's what he's capable of. You see Thayer Thomas against Mario Love. Love's actually got really nice coverage. He may have an argument there on the juggle, but. Well, we didn't see replay at Clemson last week on Andrew Booth, and it cost him a one-hander. Right. And I don't think we're going to get the replay on Thayer Thomas. And the point is good <laughs> from Ian Williams. Great catch from Thayer Thomas. Pushes the red lead back to 17 points. And the second touchdown pass of the day for Devin Leary.
Can you hear that? Touchdown, Clemson! 67 yards, Trevor Lawrence. Next chapter. You'd like to sell your home now. Well, five minutes to go in this uh, first half, and we rejoin you with Isaiah Moore making a play on Demarcus Jones. Redshirt freshman running back for the Wolfpack with Roddy Jones. No relation that we know of to Demarcus, West Durham. Matt Curry, our producer, Justin Stoll, our director here today in Raleigh for the red and white game. Under five to go, and here is Jones again, and runs right into the teeth of the red defense. Savion Jackson, number 90. Isaiah Moore in there. You know, Wes, we, earlier in the broadcast, we talked a little bit about NC State not necessarily getting the, the recognition they deserve in, in this early preseason. And I think this defense is not getting the recognition that it deserves. They had a ton of injuries, COVID issues, guys in and out throughout the season. And this defense ended up third in the ACC in yards per play allowed. This was a really good unit. It's got a lot of guys that have played a ton of football. You mentioned Pey or we, when we talked to Peyton Wilson earlier, he mentioned the fact that a lot of these guys on the defensive side just got back before the first game because of either contact tracing or COVID. So guys like Tyler Baker Williams, who has really come on in the spring, guys like Peyton Wilson and Drake Thomas were just kind of getting their feet on them for much of the early part of the year. But this, this unit is going to be really, really good in 2021. Yep. So here is uh, Ian Williams. Getting a lot of work today, punting and kicking. And Thomas will back up on the fifth punt of the day by Williams, fielded at the 30. That's where the red will start, 50-yard punt. And don't forget, following our coverage here in Raleigh, we'll send you to South Bend, Indiana. Women's and men's lacrosse, the ACC is having a phenomenal campaign. Jenny Levy in number one North Carolina in South Bend today for a three o'clock start against number five Notre Dame. Coming up three o'clock. That's right, top of the hour, 54 minutes away right here on ACC Network. And then following lacrosse, you'll go to Tallahassee for the Florida State Garnet and Gold game. All that. It's a Saturday afternoon. You can get you can get right with. Oh yeah. Get you some wax. Devin Leary. Some Devin Leary. Ball. Yeah. Devin Leary, 9 of 18, 155 and two scores here in the opening half. And Jordan Houston will run it left side for a yard. Roddy Jones, by the way, folks, has become quite a lacrosse fan here in the last, what, two and a half months? Yeah, well, look, uh, the, the it started off as an experiment, and the lacrosse community is really just uh, open, welcomed me with open arms. I've really felt the love. So, uh, yeah, love me some lacrosse. All right. And there's a throw for Devin Carter to the 36. And tackle made in the secondary. Caden Fordham is a linebacker at a Ponte Vedra, played at the Bowl School, who has sent countless players to uh, to the next level, making the tackle on Devin Carter, who's got 70 yards on four catches, including a 28-yard touchdown here in this first half. And another crossing route for Carter. And that time, the Wolfpack tackle made by Jalen Frazier. You know, this, this NC State came out on that third down, a four receiver set. Think of this receiving core when you when the fall comes. You're going to have a Devin Carter on one side, a Mecca Mezzi on the other, two 6'3 plus guys that can high point the football. And then in the slot, you'll have Porter Rooks, the explosive Porter Rooks, and then the crafty, reliable Thayer Thomas. That's as good a foursome as you can put together. Uh, certainly with the experience, the provenness, there's a lot to be excited about on this offense. You get a look at Porter Rooks that had the big, the big play earlier, and then Devin Leary, yeah. the signal caller. A lot of reason to like what NC State's going to have. Yep. Red unit tried to make the white crowd jump, and we get a timeout here with uh, 2:06 to go. So while we get a break here and see what Tim Beck elects to do. 
Quick reminder to you that uh, tomorrow here on ACC Network, 3 o'clock start. Number 20, Duke at number 10, Florida State. The finale of the four-game set. All season long, you get great ACC softball here on ACC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Roddy, I was just thinking, if you're, if you're Tim Beck and you go that, that four-receiver unit you're talking about and you got Zonovan Knight in the backfield, <laughs> where, where do you start defending that? Uh, it, it's it's certainly going to be tough, and, and that's what Tim Beck is is obviously not only going for, but but what he's counting on, and the, moving Trent Pinnock to that H back role just gives you another weapon. And there is Jordan Houston, first down and more, and then coughed it up, but Leary falls on it at the 33. Oh, how about that? Had he played by Devin Leary, by the way. Boy, I hope Houston's not hurt bad. Yeah, Jordan Houston a little shaken up. But check out this play. You have Penix coming across and then the ability to break tackle, stay balanced. The pursuit from behind, though, looked like Jordan Poole coming in and who's had a really nice spring coming in and creating that fumble. Just hope that Jordan Houston's all right. Yeah. 94 yards on 10 carries for Jordan Houston, including a touchdown today. And the young man from Waldorf, Maryland being treated. Looked like he got kind of rolled up on that tackle you were mentioning by Poole, Roddy. Freshman linebacker. And Houston will come out. Under two to go here in this first half. That, the play by Leary, though, I mean, that, that's great effort from your quarterback in a spring practice. And... And that's something that's not lost on the rest of his teammates. I mean, it could be really easy for him to just hand the ball off and let it go, but that's the leadership that you want your quarterback showing, pursuing the ball down the field in case something like that happens. That's winning football that'll certainly translate to the fall. Yep. So, Roddy, we talk about all the changes, right, and the guys that aren't playing today, but you still got red zone type football situations that if you're Dave Dorn and Tim Beck or even Tony Gibson defensively, you want to see how your units handle these situations here, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's what spring football is all about. It's not necessarily about moving the ball at, at any particular point. It's about the individual efforts and the ability to execute in situational football, getting better in every little aspect. And that's something that they'll expect uh, out of Devin Leary. And, and, and honestly, Wes, you know, we've seen Devin Leary tuck in and run a couple of times today. That's certainly a big part of his game. But let's not forget that, that leg injury was fairly gruesome that he suffered last spring or, or last fall. So good to see him using his legs and showing that confidence to be able to do that. And here is Mims, who we've talked about a couple different times already here in this first half without Bam Knight and Ricky Person to run the rock. And now Jordan Houston shaking up. We're going to get a look at Delbert Mims, among others. A little sidearm delivery by Leary. And Mims on first and 10. Works his way down the field. We're going to get our little red zone test here at the 15, Roddy. Yeah, we are in, in, in a situation where it's less than a minute, a couple timeouts. Leary will throw that away. And the clock will stop with uh, 44 seconds left here. And we'll keep an eye on this here. This is always interesting. Oh, that's, that's not what you want to see. Jordan Houston shaken up and headed to the cart. Ricky Person over there to check on his teammate. So you're going to put this third and a yard, I guess, right at the 15. Or in that name. And now a timeout taken, as you see, Jordan Houston headed to the locker room early. We just hope that whatever he's nicked up with is yeah. a temporary thing and that he's back in time to play this fall. You know, that was, uh, Roddy, unfortunately not the case last Saturday at Clemson when Tyson Pumachan got hurt for Dabo Sweeney. And uh, that's the hard part of this, isn't it? When you see guys get hurt and 
ultimately affects what's going to happen in the fall. Yeah, the, the, the goal of spring practice is, one, to get out of it healthy, and, and then the 1A is to, to go ahead and get better. But without the health part of it, then you can't do the second part. So That's it. Uh, you, you, you just hope that, that everyone gets out as healthy as you can and, and that even if you do get dinged up, it's nothing that will prevent you from participating in the fall. Yeah. You hope that's the case for Jordan Houston. Yeah. So here's the scenario out of the timeout for Leary. And they're going to hand the ball to Mims and inside the 10. Boy, Delbert Mims just keeps driving it at you. This offensive line said a nice job, too, opening up some lanes for him. And Caden Fordham, the freshman out of Ponte Vedra, ended up making the tackle. He and his roommate Jordan Poole are, are two guys that have really stood out, two young freshmen that have really stood out at the linebacker position for NC State. Yep. 52 yards on nine carries for Mims here in the first half. So NC State has seen this red unit, which is the number one side of the ball. Run it for almost 150 yards, Roddy, here in the first half. About seven yards a carry. Yeah, that'd be something that uh, Tim Beck and Dave Dorn are, are pleased with. If you look at the freshman Delbert Mims. He's done a nice like job. Jordan Houston's had some big runs. I like how you said NC State always seems to have the factory press on the six foot. I'm telling you, like, 5'10, 5'11, 220 running back. 210 to 220. It seems like every year they just print out another one. Uh, part yeah. of that's also because Ricky Person's been around for like 10 years. Third down and three. Takes one to no one there, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and we got a little movement in our first. Is this our first penalty? False start? Hey. Roddy, first penalty of the game. <laughs> With 32 <laughs> seconds left to go in the second quarter? I think the officials are getting a little bored. <laughs> Dwayne Hay might just want to have somebody throw a flag. Right. Make sure they can still do it. Make I sure tell you, the exit. Works. Hey, how important is that piece in an execution emphasis, by the way? Oh, it's, it, you know, coming into a, to a game like this, clean football is one of the things on the uh, on the to-do list and NC State's done a nice job of it up until yep. that penalty. So here is Leary, half minute to go, crossing route and the dangerous Keon Lassane. Sophomore from Lumberton. Three catches a season ago in nine games. Clock is running here. 13 seconds left. Fourth down and four. And are we going to take this down and punch a timeout? Sure. It's good execution, though, by the offense. Uh, not necessarily on getting the, the first down, but after that, that third down play, rushing to the line of scrimmage, everybody on right. the same page, and then the, the hard count to try and get the defense to jump. Yeah. It's pretty good spring execution right there and something that they'll certainly break out in this situation in the fall. All right. I want to go back here while we're watching Devin Leary and Tim back during this timeout. Roddy, all the things Devin Leary did well last year came in about a four-game span. That was it before the injury, right? So there's yeah. still teachable moments as we see Colin Smith come on to try a 27-yard field goal here. So, so think about the fact that Devin Leary did not get a full spring with Tim Beck last year and then was out for much of camp, which kept him out early. So this is really his first opportunity without games to get that level of off-season coaching. And there is Smith adding a 27-yard field goal on the final play of this first half of the red and white game. And the red unit will take a 20-point lead to the locker room at 30-10. to 10. Now, there'll be some personnel roster shuffling during the half for Dave Doran and his team but overall red unit has run it for about 150 yards Leary has guided them to a couple of touchdowns the defense has uh, has shown up and we will get the thoughts of NC State head coach Dave Doran here in uh, in just a moment because I, I would think pretty good Roddy not great 
not bad, but maybe pretty good would be the remarks. Well, coaches are always critical in the spring, but I think there was a lot of good to take out of that first half. The ability to run the football by that red offense, the ability of Delbert Mims to, to get some touches. I'm, uh, we'll, we'll see uh, if Dave Doran agrees with us. Coach Doran, uh, first half, first 30 minutes here. I know you're, you're, you're working through a lot of things. Give us your assessment. You know, I was pretty clean. I was happy. Uh, we just had one penalty there. I thought the guys were physical running the football. And uh, it was good to see some guys, you know, battle through some contact stuff and come out. Ben Finley got hit finally. <laughs> you know, <laughs> popped up and went in, threw a really nice fade ball down the sideline and then scored a touchdown with his legs. So seeing some good things, you know. Um, I thought, you know, going into this, it was really about how clean can we play, how well can we ex uh, execute. And so far, that's been pretty solid. Uh, Seems like you had it. Go ahead, Rod. Uh, it seems like Devin Leary's done a nice job of execution as well, Coach. What did you think of uh, what he's been able to do in the first half? Yeah, I think, you know, we're playing pretty vanilla football here, but uh, he's definitely taken the game plan. He's, he's playing fast. Uh, I thought the first play could have had a, a nice completion. He was a little bit, I don't know, too early with that, but he's throwing the ball well. He's running around. I think you guys can see he's a lot more comfortable running right now, too. Uh, Real quick, we asked, uh, does Thayer Thomas negotiate throws in the spring game? <laughs> yeah, you know, we talked about it in the staff meeting the other day. I said, I want at least one crowd, please, or reverse pass. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, the, the guys on the other team were like, come on, how come we can't have them on the white team, you know? So there's negotiating, and there's all kinds of stuff happening in that last meeting. You know, we got coaching on the white team. Coach Roper's obviously asking Tony not to blitz him the whole game. You know, it's, it's all good. Going through his progression, yeah. there, Coach. He goes yeah, from one to Thomas two. Going, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on now, Thomas. That was nice. I think he would have got lit up on that play. I'm glad he didn't, but that was a heck of a throw. And it's Devin Carter's birthday, so awesome to see Devin oh, make a awesome. touchdown yeah. catch there, yeah. All right, real quick, second 30 minutes here. I know it's a running clock. What do you want to see? I know competitive depth's been a thing. Yeah, we're going to get everybody in, so you're going to get to see all the guys play, and, uh, you know, hopefully we continue. It's going to be fast with the running clock, but, you know, like to come out of this thing healthy and like to see the guys continue to play hard and finish here and not get sloppy as we do it. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Appreciate you all being here and go pack. All right. You bet. Dave Doran, head coach of the Wolfpack. Red Unit's got a 20-point lead. Uh, thanks in part to uh, Roddy Thayer Thomas going through the progressions. He goes to the from the right to the left. Toss it to the birthday boy. How about that? With a little birthday magic for the touchdown catch. This is West Durham. We welcome you back to Raleigh. The red and white game. Uh, underway, we go to second half here in just a moment. And we'll get to see Ben Finley and I think Aaron McLaughlin and maybe even a couple of others. Dave Dorn indicated to us, Roddy, it might be the... Uh, the back end of the roster here with a running clock in the second half and the 20 to 10 lead or 30 to 10 lead rather the red leads the white here as we go to half two. Yeah you get everybody in the game everybody feeling good you get some film on them and uh, hopefully as Dave Doran said to us before half you get out of here healthy is looks like he's having a good time. Yeah no, I think a couple of laughs and crowd what do you call them crowd pleasers we got to remember those plays Roddy crowd pleasers. <laughs> So we get a kick, of course, and that'll be that, and the ball will be spotted for play, and away we'll go. So what did you see in the first half that if you're an NC State fan, and we sometimes can overanalyze here, but as we're going to get a look at Aaron McLaughlin, who came in briefly after Ben Finley was shaken up, if you're Tim Beck and Dave Doran, you're going to get a look at a true freshman out of coming Georgia and probably another rep or two for Ben Finley here. What, what have you seen in the first half that you kind of want to see extended in half to? I think playing clean football, certainly, especially as you get some of these young guys in, you want to see them go out and play clean and play fast. This is not uh, something that's schemed up for the defense. It's basic plays, basic football. So you want to see them going out and playing fast. And, and hopefully you see some good things. You know, the, that leads to showcasing the, uh, the certain talents that these guys have. So here we go. White team with it at the 25. And a deep ball on the first throw. Downfield for Josh Crabtree. And there is Derek Pitts, Roddy, out of the secondary. Derek Pitts, the transfer from West Virginia. And Marshall, he's a guy that, I mean, when we talked to Peyton Wilson, pointed out Pitts as a guy who's come in and made an immediate impact. 
This is a deep secondary, but Dariq Pitts has come in and, and really done a nice job so far. Remember, played for Tony Gibson at West Virginia. And there is a carry, and that is Joey Ray out of Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, on the carry for the white squad. But Pitts is an exciting guy. And nine games a year ago, uh, when he started his career at West Virginia, had an interception in 2018. 36 tackles in two years. There's Daniel Joseph making a play. That'll get credited for a sack on McLaughlin. But Aaron McLaughlin already showed you the arm, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He <laughs> let it rip. <laughs> expect that from a 6'5 freshman who was a four-star guy, highly touted freshman. Yep. Coming in and oh, well, still obviously getting the the ins and outs of the college game, but the talent is certainly there. But if you're looking at that red defense, Jalen Scott, Daniel Joseph in the backfield, Daniel Joseph and Savion Jackson been all over the place. Yep. And on the plus side, Tanner Engel holds on to that one. And the clock continuing to move here in the second half of play. When you uh, when you've had trouble with an earlier punt and you secure that one, that's a that's a sigh of relief <laughs> moment. I say that yeah. from personal experience. <laughs> Plus field territory now. Ben Finley is a guy who was involved in a roster transaction at halftime. He goes from the white to the red squad here. Yeah, some negotiations happening. Ben Finley getting the reps with the ones in this second half and <laughs> see if he's able to operate. Uh, <laughs> you laughed at, at Dave Doran saying that, that Ben Finley finally got hit in the first half. It was a little scary, probably not the hit yeah. that he imagined taking, but yeah. he uh, eventually scored a touchdown with his legs. That one got thrown into the line of fire. And Jalen Parker, for the second time, is in the traffic pattern. From West Side. Parker out of West Side High School in Macon. Central Georgia kid, middle Georgia kid, I should say. Second and 10 plus territory here for the Red Squad. And Finley trying to go to the far side, and that was Keon Lassane again. You know, Wes, you asked what you wanted to see, and, and that's one of those throws that needs to be automatic in this offense. It's an easy access out. You're just picking it up and throwing it out to Keon Lassane. That's one that has to be automatic in your sleep and one that Ben Finley certainly wishes he had back. Yep. Third down and 10. And Finley going to keep this. And let's see where they blow the whistle. Always the critical piece of a spring game, right, Roddy? <laughs> exactly. Especially with these quarterbacks take off and run with the black jerseys. You, you, you sniff the quarterback and they blow the whistle dead. I, I think he actually could have could have gotten through that potentially in a uh, in a scenario where where he was live. All right, so we got fourth and about four and a half here, I think. Got Jones with him in the backfield. Going to spin it to the far side. A catch by Lassane and a first down. That's a pretty good catch in traffic there. There was a lot over there to contend with. And nicely done by this 5'11 sophomore Lassane. It's a heck of a catch, especially when you consider that the defender's right under the pass. How did Lassane come up with that? What con That's a great concentration. Yeah, Devin Boykin, by the way, was the defender. Here is Finley shooting a rope to Lassane. That'll get him in the uh, further into the white territory. Devin Leary joins us, Roddy, from the sideline. And Devin, I got to tell you, it was good to see you out there, my man. Uh, how did it feel? Yes, sir. It felt great, you know, just being back out here. I was just telling Icky the last time I actually had like a live set in with my offensive line in front of me was way back in October versus Duke. <laughs> and it was just great, you know, just to be out here with the guys, cheering everyone on, and it's such a fun moment. Devin, obviously the recovery has, has certainly been strenuous, but uh, what have you learned, taking a step back from the game, what have you been able to learn that maybe you wouldn't have if you were in the thick of it all of last season? Yeah, you know, it just gives you a different perspective of the game. Um, every single week, even though I'm not able to physically go out there and play, I still was able to help game plan, help watch film each day in, day out. 
And like I said, it gives you different perspectives. It gives you a lot more time to watch film, understand defense. And yeah, like it's kind of like a blessing in disguise a little bit. Devin, it was such a short line of experience, but success last year. Uh, how do you process that in the offseason and then, you know, kind of take that note taking, if you will, to spring and, and obviously into the fall? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, I just I like to live by the mentality, just take everything one day at a time, one play at a time, go one and oh, uh, kind of something that we say before every series. Uh, doesn't matter what happened last series, doesn't matter what's going to happen throughout the game. We just have to go one and oh. And that's kind of been my approach all throughout spring, uh, going into fall camp each and every day. As long as we can win each day is accomplishment for us. Mm. Devin, with the, the, the pandemic last year and spring practice being cut short, and then you were out for much of camp uh, because of because of the, the COVID restrictions, what's it been like to get a full spring with Coach Beck and be able to really get into the details of this offense? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's great for me just to be able to pick Coach Beck's brain a little bit more, uh, just even being around him more. Uh, obviously, last year with COVID, we weren't allowed to be in the facilities that much. So yeah. coming up after practice, being able to pick his brain um, and not only helping me, but our whole offense, just being around the whole staff, the new system. It's been really great. All right, Devin, we're going to get to a critical point of the first half today. Roddy Jones and I have asked Peyton Wilson. We've even asked the head coach. Thayer Thomas negotiate his pass today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was that was ridiculous. I mean, all, every time we practice that play, you know, it's a double reverse pass, usually one single receiver. Um, and luckily, the play has two. Um, you know, my job on that play is to seal the edge. After I tried to seal the edge, I, I see that our primary receiver was double covered. I right. turn around and see Thayer start to go through his progression. I'm like, <laughs> it was unbelievable. I'm like, you're throwing dimes out there. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And, and to the birthday boy, no less. Devin yeah. Carter's birthday yeah. today. Yes, sir. But, but Devin, when, when I when I talk to you about Devin Carter, Thayer Thomas, Emeka Mezzi, Porter Rooks, all of these guys coming back, I mean, what's it like with a quarterback? And then in the backfield, Bam Knight, Ricky Person, that offensive line, what's it like with so much coming back? Hey, it, it just makes my job so much easier. All I have to do is just distribute the ball to them, run the offense, and with guys on the perimeter like that, uh, even Zonovan, Ricky, Jordan, even Delbert, everyone in the backfield, it just makes my job so much easier. All right, now, Devin, I'm not going to let you out of here, though, because you've already mentioned you were over there talking to your left tackle, and that would be my best friend every time. Yeah. Uh, when this offensive line is healthy, and look, I know Sean Hills had a nice camp. I know Lyndon Cooper's played well. Uh, you've got to be excited about what's up front, too. And, and as Roddy said at the top, we all understand nationally Clemson gets a lot of love Carolina's going to get a lot of hype on the coastal side but you guys got to be really thinking hey this might be our chance we might have a chance in this deal yes sir uh, we're, we're very hungry I mean we have a lot of experience like you said coming back on the offensive line and I think the biggest thing with our team is the chemistry that we built and how we all want to take that next step being on that national mm -hmm. stage and that's the biggest thing with us is being able to take that, like I said, one day at a time. We, we know what we can accomplish. So I love asking for the players' perspective on some of these young guys. Who are some of the young freshmen or, or younger players that have really stood out to you this spring? Um, offensively, I think Julian Gray is very impressive. Yeah. Uh, he has tremendous speed. Um, and I think Aaron McLaughlin is also doing really well. Uh, he's doing a good job of trying to pick up the offense, uh, learning from both me and Ben. And it's really just exciting to see all the incoming freshmen come in in the spring and try to compete as hard as they can. It's very exciting. Well, I tell you what, it's great to see you back out there. You were fun to call last year. Uh, Roddy and I were fortunate to be in Pittsburgh that day when you took them on the drive. It was fun to see you climb that mountain and uh, excited about what you've got this fall. So stay healthy and uh, thanks again. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You bet. Devin Leary joining us. We're under five here in the third. There's a punt toward the other end of the field and we will step aside a quick timeout we'll come back red and white game is underway in Raleigh we're in the second half and it is 30 to 10 in favor of the red guys got hair loss I know what you're thinking should I shave my head comb it over wear a hat just stop. right away <laughs> Jalen Coyk changed jerseys at halftime and 
He takes a throw from Ben Finley and pushes it right in front of the goal line here, Roddy. Yeah, the toughness to try and get it in the end zone. Ben Finley's looked nice on this drive. Started it with a nice pass down the sideline, and, and that one delivers it over the middle. He's done a nice job. Yep, and here is the handoff, and crashing into the end zone is Demarcus Jones for the score. Jones also a roster transaction at the break, and he gets a red touchdown here with under two minutes to go in the third. And West 5'10", 215, again, printing him out. <laughs> Those powerful running backs in that backfield. It's really a talented backfield. Obviously, Bam Knight, Ricky Person going to get many, uh, much of the, the, the carries come the fall because of the experience. But Jordan Houston's had a nice day. Dilbert Mims has had a really nice day. And then you see Demarcus Jones getting in the end zone as well. So that will leave the point try. Colin Smith and it makes it 37 to 10 the uh, by the way the Dave Doran moved about oh I don't know 18 guys Roddy from one squad to the other here because you are taking care of Devin Leary you're taking care of some of your other guys plus the offensive guys that are missing today are mostly first line guys uh, including Zonovan Knight, who we're going to visit with here in a moment, and uh, Ricky Person and others. So you got to keep that in mind, too, as you look at where NC State did. And, hey, Roddy's like you said, you're trying to get through this thing healthy, right? Yeah, that's the ultimate goal, especially once you get, yeah, once you get your good work in at the beginning. But this, these are valuable reps for these young players. I mean, spring is a developmental time. It's one of the most important times of year for any program. Yep. And there is Ray on the carry. 200 pound red shirt sophomore goes for a dozen. And the final play of this third period. And that will do it. That'll wind us down to the end of the third. All right, so we go to the fourth. Aaron McLaughlin's got the uh, White unit going to work. And some of the frontliners on the red squad have already got the uh, floppy hat on. We'll take a break. Last 15 from Raleigh in the red white game next. Can you hear that? Touchdown, Clemson, 67 yards. Underway, Joey Ray gets the first carry. And a look at. I, you know what? I got to tell you, I'm going to tell you a little story. Andrew Harvey is a legacy at NC State. 6'2 redshirt freshman, Cary, North Carolina, went to Cardinal Gibbons. He is the son of Terry and Catherine Harvey. There's a long throw. Andrew overshoots the intended receiver. And the uh, receiver, by the way, was Neek Martin out of Winston-Salem and transfer from North Carolina Central. Andrew's dad... Terry Harvey, Roddy, was a great two-sport star at NC State. Uh, football and baseball, and up until a couple of years ago, was still one of the all-time leaders in career passing yards in Gwinnett County at Decula. How about that, Roddy Jones? It's pretty impressive. There's some good quarterbacks come through Gwinnett County. Yeah. Georgia. And here is uh, Joey Ray for a couple of yards, so good to see Andrew getting some opportunity here in this uh, fourth quarter. Uh, we're going to visit with Bam Knight, but Roddy, we were talking about schedule for NC State, and when you talk about schedule for the Wolfpack, you you find yourself looking at really the month of September and the month of October almost in clusters here because NC State's going to start the year on a Thursday night against uh, Jeff Scott in uh, South Florida as we see Ray continue to run. That time carries himself to the 40-yard line in, uh, in red territory. Then at Mississippi State, Furman at home, and then on the 25th of September, Clemson. All yeah, sorts that, of stuff to figure out in the month of September. And, and, and that trip to Mississippi State, you, you never know what, what Mike Leach's crew is gonna is gonna bring you. But that's a that's a tough trip, just because you're going into a place that that is a hostile environment. But you get a stretch during October at Boston College, at Miami, Louisville, at Florida State, Wake Forest, four or five on the road. 
And it's a tough schedule for NC State because out of the Coastal, you always get UNC, obviously, who's one of the best teams, but you also get Miami, who's likely going to be the second best team in the Coastal Division. So it's a tough schedule for a really good team that Dave Doran has. Yep, and uh, we're pleased to be joined by Zonovan Knight, better known as Bam Knight, the young man from Bailey, North Carolina. So uh, what's it been like watching this today from the sideline and not being able to run the rock? Uh, uh, it's been kind of challenging, you know, uh, but it's been exciting as well. Just watching the receivers and the running backs and overall the offense just generate explosive plays. I think that's been the best part of the day. Well, watching this offensive line has to get you excited with guys like Big Icky Iquanu, Dylan McMahon, Grant Gibson, Bryson Spees, Tyrone Riley. What's it like running behind that crew with that much experience and talent? Uh, man, it's amazing. As you can see from last year, it just automatically generates explosive plays week to week. It doesn't matter who we're playing against, and I think that's the best part of being a running back. You know, Bam, it's been funny. Roddy and I have spent a good bit of the uh, broadcast here this afternoon talking about what could be this fall. Uh, it seemed like you guys crossed a lot of hurdles last year, ones that were there because of COVID, ones that had been there two years ago from injury. It just seems like that a lot of good happened here in Raleigh last year. Yeah, um, and I think this fall is going to be a team that nobody has seen before. We just have so many weapons at every position on offense, defense, and I think that's going to be the game change for us this fall. All right, talk to me about the running back room. Obviously, you and Ricky, uh, the most experienced guys, but Jordan Houston's played a lot of ball. Delbert Mims, Demarcus Jones have had nice days. What's what's the dynamic in that running back room? Oh, my God, man. This is just an exciting group overall. I think you could put anybody in um, in any part of the game, and I think it wouldn't be a drop-off. You know, I think everybody is quick, explosive, has that power. As you can see from the day, Delbert and Demarcus, they've been running with power. Even Joey Ray is out there right now. Everybody has just been playing real good at practice, and they've been good with taking it into the game today. All right, Bam, here's the deal. Roddy has said that there's like a factory press on 5'10 to 6'2'10 to 225 running backs at NC State. If you don't hit those markers, you're not allowed to run the rock, apparently, in Raleigh. Mm, I, I'm not too sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> you fit the bill, though, man. You're yeah. about power and speed, and you want to catch it a little bit, too, right? I mean, there's a lot of multiplicity in what Coach Beck wants you guys to do. Yeah, I mean, I think this is what it takes to be, make it to the next level. You have to be able to do have a little bit of everything in every category. Got All a right. pick six going on for this uh, for the white defense, but but Bam, I want to I want to ask you too about your ability to affect the game in special teams. You had a kick return, big kick return for a touchdown a year ago. How much fun is doing that as well, returning kicks? Oh uh, man, that's a blessing. You know, the Miami game when I had that return, that was that was just an exciting moment for me because I was like third on the depth chart and just some things happened. <laughs> like Jordan dropped the kick return and then Ricky was starting. So they just kind of threw me back there and then that happened. And from there, I was just starting, starting kick but, returner. So but, look forward to but, trying to get on kick return or some stuff like that in the future. Well, I'm gonna tell you, number seven is all luck for NC State. We look forward to seeing you in the fall, my man. Stay healthy, okay? Thank you, you guys have a good afternoon. You bet, Bam Knight, 37 to 10. Score is uh, Caden Fordham, by the way, got the pick six. And we will take a break here on the point by Ian Williams. Come back. Don't forget lacrosse coming up next. Number one, North Carolina. Number five, Notre Dame from South Bend. As you see, the point after is pushed through by Williams. More from Raleigh in a moment. You're watching ACC Network Spring Football, presented by GEICO. You deserve more from your steak. You deserve the only steak that's guaranteed to be perfect every single time. And 262-pound freshman from Lincoln to North Carolina. Why are you looking, Roddy? Because there he is. Big fella rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. How about the track? He takes the hand off. Having a little fun there. I love it. And ball down the uh, near sideline intended for Keon Lassane. By the way, we're going to send those of you watching on ACC Network, Jay Alter, Dana Boyle standing by at South Bend. They're going to have uh, lacrosse for you. Number one, North Carolina. Number five, Notre Dame coming up. Those of you watching the red and white game, we will finish activities on the ESPN app. 
here today. And there is the throw by McLaughlin. It's going to be whistled as a sack, Roddy. What do we see here today from the I Wolfpack you that encourages you? I thought you see a lot of clean football. Obviously, the talent was on display, but more than that, the execution was on display. Exactly what you want to see from an experienced team here in the spring. Eight and four a year ago, winners of four of their last five. I think the Wolfpack's got a lot to be excited about. If they get healthy for fall, they will be a tough out in the Atlantic Division. You're right. That's a fifth floor problem. Okay.